This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to calculate the area of an irregular quadrilateral. And uh, specifically, I'm using the abbreviation SASSS. And what that stands for is that we are given a side, an angle, a side, a side, and another side. So we basically have four sides we're given and one angle to the problem. Okay, so for this very specific situation, I'm going to uh, demonstrate how it is you're supposed to calculate this. And of course, this is going to involve uh, several formulas with uh, trigonometry, but I'm going to, of course, go through those formulas uh, and, and show you exactly what it is I'm doing. Okay, so if we've got a problem like this, the first step that we're going to do to calculate this is, of course, divide this figure into two triangles. Our trigonometry, um, without using any special formulas, deals with triangles. And you can see I've got a quadrilateral. So what I'd like to do is to divide this figure into two parts. Now, of course, if I were to divide along this diagonal, I would have two triangles, except I'm going to ruin this angle. I'm going to split it, in, and, and I don't want to split this angle. I want to preserve this angle. So instead, I'm going to draw the other diagonal. So in other words, imagine this. Of course, imagine this being a straight line. I'm just doing my best to draw this, of course, by hand. But imagine that being a diagonal. Now I have two triangles. All right, now it turns out that uh, we could calculate the area of this first triangle. And there's a really simple formula. OK, so once this figure is divided, we now use the formula for finding the area. OK, so this is what I'm going to call step one. Well, maybe step one was to actually divide the figure. But if I'm just talking straight calculation, uh, I'll show you how to calculate. So I guess I'm going to break this up into calculation steps. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is find the area of a triangle. Uh, now, there are formulas uh, in geometry to find area of triangles. Uh, and since this is not a right triangle, you know, base times height divided by 2 is just not going to cut it. So there is a formula that says uh, for area, if you're given two sides and the angle between the two sides, we can use a very simple formula. What you do is you take the two sides, you multiply the two sides together, 140 and 20. And then you take the sine of the angle and multiply it by that. Okay, now I have to tell you though it only works in this situation where you've got two sides and you do know the angle between those two sides. Okay, so the formula, like I said, you take the two sides, multiply them, multiply it by the sine of the angle between them, times a half. Okay, so of course I did this earlier and the area I get is 1378.73. Of course I rounded it to the nearest hundredth, so technically this is an approximation. Uh, okay, now I am going to have two areas, one area for this triangle and I'm going to have another area for the second triangle. So um, I'm really going to call this first area area 1. Okay, so this is really going to be area 1. This is going to be area 2. Okay, so what I did, of course, was I just calculated the area uh, of area 1. Okay, so that's why I'm going to call it A sub 1. All right, now we're going to hang on to that uh, because we're going to do another calculation in a moment. So there, there's several. Uh, you know, we can't right now calculate the area of the second triangle because I don't know the angles. I don't, I don't know the angle between the two sides. I don't know angles. There's no formula in the world that can, I could use on this. Uh, so I need to find something else with this triangle. Well, it turns out that this red dashed diagonal, I could actually find the length of that. And we could use the law of cosines. So we're going to find, as our next step, the length of the diagonal. Okay, so to find the length of the diagonal, we use something called the law of cosines. Okay, so um, I'm going to call this C, 
Okay, maybe I should put this on here. I'm going to call this C. I'm going to call this A. I'm going to call this B. So this is triangle ABC. All right, now remember how this works is that the side opposites those angles are small case. So if this is big capital C, angle C, then this has to be small case C. If this is big B, then this is little b, right? This 140 stands for little b. And if this is angle A, opposite it is going to be little a. So the 20 is little a. All right, well, if you could accept that fact of me labeling the triangle as such, there is a formula. And the formula, and this is, of course, the law of cosines. And it's minus 2ab cosine of c. Okay, so it's a formula I'm going to use. So what you do for the formula is, of course, plug everything we know. We don't know C. Uh, we do know A is 20. We do know B is 140. Uh, let's see. We know A is 20. We know B is 140. And we know capital C, yep, we know angle C is 80. Okay, so there we go. We got this big formula. And the good news is there's no variables here on the right side. These are all numbers and trigonometric functions, multiplication, subtraction. So you land up throwing this whole, whole calculation exactly the way it is, either into a TI-84, 83, uh, maybe a new TI Inspire, whatever. New new calculators can just take, tackle that with no problem. I, I'm not going to show the steps there. You're going to have to figure out how to do that one. Uh, we do have videos on law of, uh, or order of operations. You can check that out. But uh, I'm going to multiply that all together. And it turns out that I did that earlier, and I'm getting 19,027 and approximately 0.57. Okay, that, that's C squared, of course. And I don't want C squared. I want C. So, of course, you take the square root of that. And that's going to give you C, which, of course, is the length of the diagonal. So we take the square root. And, of course, I get 137 point, approximately 94. And there you go. So that is the length of the diagonal. So I'm going to put that right in here. I'm going to put 137 point. 94. Okay, so now we got the length of that diagonal. Whew, a lot of little steps to this, and, and, and there's actually going to be two more. So this is kind of involved. A lot of trigonometry here. Okay, so now there's something called Huron's formula. Uh, here, and actually what it's going to allow us to do is to calculate the area of that triangle. So to calculate the area of this triangle, which was, I'm trying to find uh, area two, we're going to use something called Heron's formula. Some people call it Hero's formula, but it's Heron. And uh, let me show you what that formula looks like. Okay, so the formula that I'm about to use for area two looks like this. Okay, it's kind of an involved formula. It's S times S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. Okay, so those are S's. Uh, and you're thinking, what the heck is S? All right, S is the semi-perimeter of this triangle. Okay, well, you think semicircle. Semicircle means half a circle. Well, semi-perimeter means the same thing. If I take the perimeter, that which means add up all the sides, so if I add up all the sides to find the perimeter, the semi-perimeter is half that. So the semi-perimeter is what I'm going to calculate first. Okay, so I'm, all, I'm all actually on the third step of this problem, which is to calculate area of the triangle. Okay, so this is, of course, the second triangle. So I'm on to doing that, our third step. Okay, so what is the semi-perimeter? Well, I'm going to say that's S. Uh, okay, maybe I can do that a little bit neater. Okay, so it's eh, just leave it like that, S. Okay, well, S is 30 plus 150 plus 137.94, but we divide it all by 2. 
Okay, so what does that give me? It gives me a semi-perimeter of 158.97 approximately. Just rounding that to, the, of course, the nearest hundredth. Okay. All right, now what we have to do is actually plug that value S in, right? All those S's are now going to be 158.97, and the A is one of the sides, the B is the, another side, and then the C is the last side. It doesn't matter what order we put in, but those are the A, B, and C are the three sides of that triangle. Okay, so I'm going to move this down a little bit to give myself uh, a little bit of room. Okay, so move it down, but I still want to see this uh, quadrilateral. Okay, so good old Huron, uh, we're going to use his formula. All right, now this is going to get a little bit messy, but because there's a lot of numbers, I'm going to put it here. So I'm going to put a giant square root sign. I don't know how long the square root I'll need, uh, but let's see. I'm going to put the 158.97, and I put the 158.97 minus 30. I do the 158.97 minus 150, and I do the 158.97 minus 137.94. Okay, that's all under one square root sign. Giant problem, right? Okay, so this is area two. So the second area, if I plug all that into the calculator, it turns out to be 1966.61 approximately. Okay, so that's what it would be approximately. All right, now that of course is not the final area. So now the Next step, and the last step, this is the fourth and last step of the problem, we're now going to calculate the total area. So the total area is just the sum of the smaller areas. So I'm going to take this A1, 1378.73, and I'm going to add 1966.61. I'm going to add those together. Okay, move this down a little bit. All right, so it turns out the total area, if I add these together, is 3,345.34. Of course, this would be units squared. So if my units were in feet, this would be feet squared. If it's in meters, if my units were in meters, it would be meters squared. So I'm just going to put a U squared to indicate square units. Okay, let's review the steps real quick. Divide the figure along the diagonal. Calculate the area of that triangle. Then, we use the law of cosines to find the length of the diagonal. Now that we have the length of the diagonal and two other sides of this second triangle, we could use Heron's formula to calculate the area of that triangle. Last step, we take the two areas, area one and area two, add them together to get the total area. Okay, it's a lot of steps, but that's how you use trigonometry to find the area of an irregular quadrilateral. Okay, make sure you check out our other videos on mathguide.com. Uh, we also have interactive quizzes as well and several text lessons. All right, have a great day. Take care.